All right. So do you think of your coffee as just a wake up call or like your morning ritual? There's some cool new research that shows it might actually be adding years to your life and the timing might be everything. A brand new study in the European Heart Journal tracked over 42,000 U.S. adults over 10 years, and the results were really, really cool. People who drank coffee only in the morning had a significantly lower risk of dying from both heart disease and from any cause, all-cause mortality. But those who drank it throughout the day saw no added benefit even if they drank the same amount. So here's the kicker. I didn't drink coffee until I became a dad. My childhood friends, family were stunned. Let's be honest, once sleep goes, caffeine shows. I'm Dr. Mark, concussion specialist, performance doc, and sort of a new recruit to the morning coffee crowd. And today we're going to break down why when you drink your coffee might matter more than the type of brew that you drink. And I want to give a special shout out, thanks, credit to examine.com for bringing this study to my attention and their cool breakdown in the context around it that we're about to go through. So to kick this off, this wasn't some small clickbaity study. It used what's called NHANES data. So NHANES, it's a national representative health survey and it followed participants for nearly a decade. So this wasn't N equals 50 people over six weeks. This is over 42,000 people from all across the US for a decade. What they found were two coffee drinking patterns that people had. We had our morning drinkers and we had our all day drinkers. So morning drinkers had coffee from anywhere between 4 a.m. to noon, and then all day drinkers had it in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. So here's what happened. Morning drinkers, we, we see ranges here, but morning drinkers had a 16 to 29 percent lower risk of all cause mortality, so dying of any kind of disease cause, and they had a 30 to 48 percent lower risk of cardiovascular mortality, so dying of cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular vascular complications. But the all-day drinkers had no statistically significant reduction in either category. And I think it's really important here to look at the fact that these weren't just due to lifestyle differences. It wasn't just morning coffee drinkers tend to be more motivated and healthy people, whereas all-day drinkers tend to be, you know, whatever. The researchers actually adjusted for a full suite of confounding variables, including age, sex, race, income, education, body mass index, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, smoking status, their time since quitting, their physical activity, their total calorie intake, their diet quality and beverage intake, including coffee, tea, soda, sleep duration, and trouble sleeping. So in other words, this wasn't just like healthy people tend to drink coffee and they tend to do it in the morning. The protective effect was specifically linked to the morning pattern of coffee, not just how you how much you drink. So even higher coffee intakes didn't necessarily help even by spreading it over the whole day. It appeared to be the timing. So why would when you drink coffee change its effects? So there's two big reasons and they both come back to your body's internal clock. One looking at your circadian rhythm and another looking at timing of inflammation in the body. Starting with the circadian rhythm, caffeine isn't just a stimulant, it also blunts melatonin. It sort of blocks melatonin. In one study, having caffeine three to six hours before bed reduced melatonin production by up to 30%, which is going to delay the onset of sleep and disrupt the body's natural rhythms. And so when we think about that three to six hours before bed with caffeine, what else are people also doing before bed that blunts melatonin production? Watching things like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, things like that, where the blue light actually suppresses melatonin production. So if you're hitting it with screens and caffeine, whoa. So that may not seem like a big deal until you follow the dominoes. So melatonin suppression might lead to shorter and lower quality sleep, which can lead to increased sympathetic activity, which can lead to increased nighttime blood pressure, which can lead to increased inflammation. And over time, that's going to contribute to higher risk of cardiovascular disease, insulin resistance, and other metabolic dysfunction. And this isn't just like a theoretical follow the breadcrumbs. We actually know that poor sleep is consistently linked to a well-established independent risk factor for heart disease. And so for our all-day coffee drinkers, caffeine consumed late in the day can blunt your ability to enter this regenerative, parasympathetic, good recovery state that sleep should provide. The other side of that sort of internal clock coin would be your inflammatory markers and inflammation in the body. So we tend to see inflammatory markers like a C-reactive protein, CRP, and other cytokines naturally peak in the morning and then gradually decline by later in the afternoon. And when we're drinking coffee in the morning, coffee contains powerful anti-inflammatory compounds like chlorogenic acid and trigonaline. And both of those can help reduce oxidative stress and inflammation. So if you drink your coffee during that morning inflammation spike, you're sort of catching your biology at the exact time it would need that antioxidant support or benefit from that antioxidant support. But, and this is theoretical, spreading your coffee across the day, those compounds may not be targeted like in any meaningful way, and the caffeine may start working against you 
on the sleep side of things. So to sum that up, morning coffee tends to just work with your biology and late day caffeine tends to interfere with your biology. So while we're talking about caffeine, let's talk about the another important finding of this study was that decaf coffee showed similar protective associations. So it's not just the caffeine, it's the full blend of the polyphenols, the antioxidants and other bioactive compounds in the coffee. And a few more practical notes. Filtered coffee, so drip, pour over is better than unfiltered. So methods like French press or boiled coffee, that tends to retain compounds like cafestol that can raise LDL cholesterol. If you're a cold brew drinker, hi, that's me. You're probably in the clear as long as it's passed through a paper filter or fine mesh. Cold brew is considered filtered usually, and it doesn't carry that same LDL risk as the unfiltered French press boiled coffee coffees. Another little note is that while caffeine can raise blood pressure in the short term, especially in new users, habituated drinkers tend to build a tolerance. And over the long term, there's no clear evidence that coffee consistently raises your blood pressure overall. So how should we think about our coffee? Here's your actionable takeaways. Stick to one to three cups of coffee in the morning. So between 4 a.m. and noon. Finish drinking coffee before noon. When we think about caffeine's half-life and how it's affecting sleep and melatonin, you want to stop by noon. Decaf does work as well. So it's not just about the jolt. Like I just said, avoid sipping into the afternoon or the evening. And if you can, try to choose filtered methods and ditch the ultra processed sweeteners. I take my whiskey neat, my coffee black, and my bed by 10 p.m. So coffee can be a ritual and it can be a strategic tool, but like any tool, it's you got to use it right for it to work. So is coffee good for your heart? The overwhelming data appears to say yes. And this new data says, let's try to time it better. So are you a morning only drinker or do you sip your coffee all day. Let me know in the comments. Like this video, subscribe, hit the bell, do the YouTube things. It's free for you. I appreciate it. It helps me. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark.